Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really, really good video, highly anticipated. A lot of you have been asking about it in the comments. How do I do keyword research? Can I do a tutorial showing how I do keyword research? Well, I finally decided this is the time to show you exactly how I find keywords that will rank in Google, win snippets, and bring in a substantial amount of organic traffic to my authority websites. I've used this method on my most recent authority website, which I just hit publish on the 500th article this week. That's a website I started on December 5th in 2020. So a lot of keyword research, a lot of planning, a lot of outsourcing to my writers, formatting, publishing. It's all been really good stuff, but this is exactly how I found those articles. Today, we're gonna to walk through those steps. I'm gonna give you some keyword examples, actionable items, meaning that these are keywords that you can actually go and rank if this topic is uh, what your website's about. And we're gonna kind of walk through the different stages of you know, when I find a keyword, what do I do with that keyword? And what's the information that's relevant once I outsource it? So stay tuned. All you need today is your browser with a Google search engine, as well as a keyword tool, not required, but it can help with some further analysis. For today's video, we're gonna be using Uber Suggest. Okay guys, so let's jump right into the keyword analysis I'm gonna be using Uber Suggest, which you see on the screen right now, as well as Google. Um, search engine's important. We're gonna kind of do the alphabet soup method, meaning that you start typing out a phrase, experiment with different letters, and see what pops up in the SERPs. I also have a spreadsheet where we can be tracking all these keywords and find what are ones we would be outsourcing to writers if that was the case for this niche. So let's jump right off the bat, and I'm gonna kind of assign the aquarium niche to this project. Now, the reason I picked this niche is I know other YouTubers have used this niche before. It's something that is popular for niche websites, but also I went after keywords in this video that haven't been targeted by any other um, niche websites. We're gonna go after phrases that are kind of unique to this video, meaning we're not stealing someone else's traffic. Actually, in most of these cases, this is traffic that you can harvest on your site if this is your niche. So let's jump right into it. Now, thinking about the aquarium niche, off the bat, you always wanna try and think about those questions that you may have, or that somebody who is in that niche searching for something might come up with. So, you know, I used to have an aquarium at my house, a really small, small aquarium. I, I did have a fish tank with a filter and other things that went into keeping it clean and feeding my fish and trying to prolong their life as long as possible. They do, unfortunately, not live too long. But right off the bat, I remember one thing I always talked about was, how often should I feed my fish? Uh, am I overfeeding, am I underfeeding my fish? So let's go, how often should I feed my guppies? Okay, oh look, recommended search there, that's always a good sign, and we're gonna click on it. So, okay, right off the bat, you're gonna see a snippet up here. So how often should I feed my guppies? Feed your adult guppies a small amount of food two or three times per day. Feed them no more than they can eat in about five minutes so the uneaten food doesn't foul the water. Okay, so that's a pretty good response there for this topic. Um, but when I scroll down, I notice how the third option right here, right off the bat, is a fish form, which is really interesting to see because fish forms or other forms related to your niche are going to be really good sites to go after their keywords to see kind of what you can take from them and build an article that has more content and more information, which would easily outperform any type of form post. You'll see a lot of people going after forms, message boards, um, websites like Quora, where it has questions and the answers are right on the, the Google first page. Those are easy ones to go after right off the bat. So this fish forms, I'm gonna keep an eye on this one because if I take fish, so let's click on it. If I go to fish forms, I'm gonna copy that URL. I'm gonna jump over to Uber Suggest right here and I'm gonna just type in this fish form, which is gonna to default to the domain. Yes, it has a decent authority, a lot of backlinks, but I can go here and look at what type of um, keywords they're going after, what are these articles, and say, okay, these are opportunities to maybe write, a, write an article about it. It's getting some decent traffic. What are the keywords that it's ranking for? So this one, how long does it take for a water conditioner to work? Okay, look, this one's getting some phrases here. This has 210 searches a month. Currently, this form is the second position. So this is just like a good thing to keep tabs on. What forms are in your niche? What type of traffic are they bringing? What keywords are they going after? And that can be a great place to start for finding articles 
and content that you can rank for right off the bat, especially with a new website. So let's jump back to the Google search and let's just go to the next phrase. I kind of want to move along here to get a few different options. Um, the one we had here with how often should I feed my guppies, I actually think that's a decent one to start out with. Yes, someone else kind of won the snippet already, but the fact that there's a form on the third result means there could be some opportunity here. So what I would do here is say, okay, well, how much search volume is this getting? Go back to Uber Suggest. I'm going to go to Keyword Ideas, and I'm going to type in that keyword. Once I search that keyword, it's going to tell me what type of difficulty that keyword has, which we already have a great idea of because we actually typed it in the search engine. But more importantly, we're going to see what type of keyword volume that this tool is pulling. Now, these tools aren't always accurate with the search volume, and no one really knows what the actual search volume is outside of Google. But this one's telling us it gets 50 clicks a day, which I think is pretty good. So I'm going to take that keyword. I'm going to go to my Aquarium website spreadsheet. I'm going to go title. How often should I feed my guppies? I'm going to go words. I think a 1,000 word article would be fine to try and win the snippet or get a top result here. Monthly search volume is 50. And then once I outsource, I usually put the cost, the writer, is it complete, and what's the primary source? So in this case, I have this as the primary source. So I'm gonna click on this right here, copy the link. And usually this is something I like to show the writers is to show, show them what's currently ranking, what's currently um, a decent standard of content. And I toss that right in there. So guppies need eat, perfect primary source. Okay, great. Now we have one article done. Let's go to the next one. Now, a big thing with Google is you wanna try and go for the alphabet soup topics, right? So if I go back here and type in, do gold fish. Okay, now there's a bunch of recommended things here, but we have a brand new website, so we want to go for some lower competition phrases. So maybe one I'll do is do gold fish like. Now, what's one that's interesting here? Now, remember, these are the closer that these phrases are to the top of, of Google's recommended search, the more traffic it most likely receives for that phrase, because Google wants to promote and suggest phrases that are more commonly searched. So if that phrase is closer to the top, odds are more people are looking for that search term. So what I'm gonna kind of go down to is I wanna try and focus on the bottom ones maybe for a newer website to see if there's any opportunities to harvest some easy traffic with zero competition. So let's click on this one right here. Do goldfish like moss balls? Okay, right off the bat, this is a great sign. So I think we have a home run right here. Do goldfish like moss balls? The top one is a form, right? We click on it right here. And it's actually a forum with people talking about it. So, you know, really not that great content, not that much information. That could be a great opportunity to write an article and win a snippet right off the bat for a brand new website. Now, take that phrase, go into Uber Suggest, see what type of search volume that phrase is getting. And this is interesting. So this phrase is actually showing in Uber Suggest how it's slowly loading. It only gets 10 searches a month. Difficulty is a five, so obviously we know the difficulty is quite low, the fact that a form actually won the snippet when we go back to here. But this is an opportunity to get some easy traffic right off the bat. So if we take this phrase, that can be an easy article that we can write for a new website and rank right off the bat. So a thousand words, monthly search volume 10, and then primary source, I can even just toss in the word form, right? Like it's a form, it's a message board, there's a real um, lack of content out on the internet, that could be a great opportunity to win a snippet right away. And I found this phrase with the alphabet soup method, right? Just kind of typing in do goldfish like, look at what the recommended phrases were, take that phrase, go into Uber suggest and kind of correlate the monthly search volume to the competition to see, okay, this might be a great opportunity to write a really good article. So going back to our method, let's go back and do this again. Um, now let's go back to do goldfish again, because this is really what I do for my sites. I kind of stick to those like first two or three words that sound like a good phrase for a question and see where I can expand on it. So as you can see, Google actually recommends uh, Java moss and eat moss because I already typed in moss balls. So those are just interesting, maybe relevant subheadings that can go in that article, which is something I can mention to my writer. Or as you train your writers, you can teach them how to do this on their own, which trust me, saves a ton of time. But let's go to do goldfish rather than like, do goldfish need? Let's go for that one. Okay, do goldfish need, now there's a lot of good ones here. Do goldfish need friends? Do goldfish need light? 
These are all phrases that people are searching, but we want to try and get one that doesn't have a lot of competition. But I noticed the word A starts the top three phrases. So let's go that route. Now, do goldfish need a heater, a filter, a bubbler, a light? So I'm sure these are probably a little bit more competitive for those in that space. But let's jump down a little bit further. Do goldfish need a big tank? Now, I think this is a really good keyword because not only can this be an informational type of keyword, this can be an opportunity to throw in some affiliate links to Amazon and maybe sell a big tank that is recommended for goldfish. So let's go for that one. Do goldfish need a big tank? Okay, so the first result here is, is so stfrancis.org website from 2013, giving a pretty decent answer about proper aquarium environments for goldfish, which I think is actually a decent article. I just don't know what type of topical authority they have on the phrase where they can be that hard to beat. I don't think they would be that hard to beat. And as you scroll down and look at some other things, there's some other goldfish websites, but the topics don't seem that concrete. I mean, this one, do goldfish need a big tank? That's probably a good example of an article ranking. Someone answers a question right off the bat. This one might be a little more difficult to go after. Um, I still think the keyword difficulty is quite low, but let's just get an idea of what the search volume is for this phrase. So if I go into to Uber Suggest and see what the monthly search volume is for do goldfish need a big tank, I see something pretty interesting here. Um, very similar to kind of the last article, there's minimal traffic. This is a keyword volume 20, but there seems to be slightly more competition. So maybe this is an article I wouldn't want to put in my spreadsheet for one of my first articles on my website, because yes, the keyword difficulty is quite low, but it doesn't scream that guaranteed snippet that you'd want an article with maybe only 20 monthly search volume would bring you. Now, you're not gonna build a website just going after articles or producing articles that just have you know, five, 10, 20 monthly search volume. That's not what you're trying to go for. But when you do an article like this that has monthly search volume of 20 for the primary phrase, you can rank for other keywords depending on your subheadings, other phrases that you mentioned throughout your article, different long tails that maybe expand from your main title. There's so many different keywords that can come out of it. The fact you can almost guarantee a snippet for a phrase that gets traffic is a great beginning, especially for a new website. So that's a good thing to note. Let's keep moving along. Let's try for another phrase now. Let's go, um, sometimes do goldfish. I, I think it's good to go after those question phrases. So maybe like why, gold, fish, and I see some recommended phrases here. Die, turn black, turn white, swim upside down, die so fast. So these are all decent ones. Um, maybe why goldfish eat, okay, interesting. Top one, why goldfish eat rocks? Let's go for that one. Right up top, goldfish, oh, okay, another win here. So this is a goldfish form. So another message board that you can go after for goldfish. So I click on this one here. And like I said, I mean, these, these forms are great, easy ones to go after because they don't get a lot of traffic. And the traffic that they do receive is just because it's such a low competition phrase that Google has no choice but to rank these articles high or rank these web pages high because there is no good article out there about them. So this is a great example. I'm gonna take this phrase, go back to Uber Suggest, punch it in, see the keyword volume, and it's gonna tell me, hopefully some, some good things we wanna see here. So why goldfish eat rocks. Okay, so now this is one where it has zero volume. However, it is a phrase on a search engine. I'm sorry, it is a phrase that's mentioned in the goldfish form. So clearly some people are interested in that topic and there is no other real articles out there. But what I noticed down here, even though that the monthly search volume is zero, I see a Quora post here. Why do pet fish eat rocks at the bottom of the aquarium? So when I click on that, I, I notice something pretty cool. There's some answers here. And when I click more, you can actually see how many views those answers got. Now, it could be, it couldn't all be organically. Maybe it didn't come in through a search engine, but clearly there's some interest for that topic. And if this answer is from 2018, that means in over three years, it got 15,000 views. Well, if you think about it, that's 5,000 views a year. 5,000 views a year would be just around 400 to 500 page views a month for this one topic. So despite the search tool showing zero volume, some people out there are really wondering, you know, why goldfish eat rocks? And this could be a great example of an easy snippet to win that actually might bring in a lot of traffic. And that's why it's great to go after some of these phrases 
because you're almost locking in a guarantee that you're probably going to rank in the top three and hopefully win the snippet. And the second piece to it is just, does it bring in traffic? So if you can use something like Quora to prove that it does receive traffic and there's a tension for that topic in that niche, then yeah, go for it. So I go keywords, I'm sorry, words 1000, monthly search volume zero, primary source, we're gonna go four months again. And voila, there's three good articles that we should probably win the snippet for that bring in some search volume that could help a new website rank right away. Now. This is a really key secret here. Now, I had some I had some good phrases here, and say you start running out of phrases or you run into the alphabet soup and there's just a lot of competition out there, but you have these phrases that you found earlier, these are just great ways to find more examples of topics that you can rank for. So when I go back here to, when I go back to the search engine for you know fishlore.com, if I take that URL and I go plug it into Ubersuggest, like I did for fishforms.net, I could go find other phrases that are ranking on, look at this one. So there's phrases that they might be ranking for. Now, I don't know if this is the form or this is the website, but this one's an example of they have profiles of different types of fish that they receive a lot of traffic for. Now, if I go to overview on the website, I mean, this website has a lot of decent traffic for phrases. But when I go for one like fishforms.net, We saw this earlier, there's other phrases that we can go after and target them right away, right? No one else wrote an article on it. Who's better to compete with than a form right off the bat? And there's some interesting ones you see here. Would you use a TV stand to hold your fish tank? Okay, this article supposedly brings in 251 views a month according to Uber Suggest. And when I do the breakdown, I can see actually what keywords rank for it. Now, TV stand for fish tank, actually gets a decent chunk of search volume. So this is another good article maybe that you go for the affiliate twist. Yes, provide an informational answer, explain why a TV stand could be good or not good for a fish tank. And if it is good for a fish tank, provide a link to Amazon promoting a fish tank or another affiliate network of what's a good product that someone should buy. These are really good phrases because not only are they informational where they can bring in some ad revenue, but they have that buyer intent still tied to it where if you provide a good answer and you offer decent advice to that user that's coming for an answer to their question, you can easily forward them off and get a sale from it right away, which is a great opportunity. So this is really how I do keyword research. And the cool thing about this is I've actually won several snippets already doing this method. All my articles pretty much come from this idea. However, as I start producing more content, once I get to 10, 20, 50 articles, I take a jump up in my organic search traffic requirements. For example, my first, let's say 50 articles might be closer to that zero to 250 monthly search volume where there's no competition except for a form. And I have a feeling that I'll win that snippet or get to the top right away. Now doing this method on my first authority website, I've had some articles that bring in anywhere from 400 to 800 visitors per month per article that are these zero competition to 200 monthly search volume words that just don't have a lot of competition. They're easy to rank and they bring in way more traffic than I ever expected. So if you go after a bunch of these low competition keywords and you're just winning snippets and ranking higher, not only are you bring in traffic and you're seeing some fruits to your labor, whether you outsource or write the article on your own, but now you're starting to gain some topical authority in Google. And as you go after some more competitive keywords and phrases, it's just gonna help your website rank for even more and more competitive keywords. So this is a great method to start for a new website or even for an existing website. You might want find yourself jumping up the SERPs and ranking for these phrases faster. If your website's 36 months, a year, three years old, it's just gonna help. It's gonna continue to build topical authority. Make sure you interlink these articles with other relevant information on your website and carry that link juice over. But this is a great opportunity to say, how can I find a low competition keyword that maybe already has some interest in the space Use the alphabet soup method in Google, start typing the phrase out, and use a keyword tool to kind of just satisfy your, your organic monthly search volume intent, right? Like, how can you justify paying for this writer if this article may only gets five views a month? Well, you do a few and you try to see if it works out. I mean, this is something here that, I mean, I would, if I write this article on my own, that's fine. It's a cost of time for myself. But if I outsource these articles, I'm going to try and maybe give these to some of my lower cost writers that do a good job of writing 1,000 word informational articles that answer the question right away.